Well, folks, it's earnings season. That means it is drama season. We got stocks making some wild moves. Meta looks like it wants to go over 400 before it even hits earnings this week. Wow, I mean, just an incredible move. I was thinking 400 after earnings, but it looks like it's going to go there before earnings. We got Tesla breaking the three day rule, which basically is an old rule that says if a stock is going down huge on an earnings, you know, you got to wait several days because the stock's going to go down a bunch more. And Tesla says, I play my own games. Okay, so it's breaking the three day rule. PayPal shook out a bunch of weak hands, breadcrumb chasers yesterday. This market's getting really intriguing, but there's one core subject we're going to speak about here today. I bought Tesla stock here today. I view right now as a very attractive time to be a buyer of Tesla stock. We're going to speak about why now. I'm going to go through exactly why. And by the end of this video, it's going to be hard to make any statement against Tesla. Let's just put it that way by the end of this video here today. I, if you're bearish, I don't think there's really anything you're going to be able to say after this video. Let's just put it that way, okay? But, you know, bears will always have something to say, so they'll still say whatever. But we're going to talk about why now. We're going to talk about do I know something here. We're going to speak about, you know, is the stock about to go from ultra bearish to ultra bullish and all those sorts of things. So a lot to go through in today's video. All I need you guys to do is smash that like button and make sure you're subscribed to the channel. That's it. S smash a like, subscribe to the channel. That's it, folks, okay? It was a huge day here today. Uh, very exciting day for me personally, and I want to share this win with you guys. Uh, five-figure club for the Patreon portfolio. First time ever in history, five figures. This is a portfolio we started back in January of last year, and um, yep, first time over $10,000 here today. If you want to know what stocks are doing the best in there, the, the top five positions in terms of percent gain so far, Palantir's number one, 73% gainer so far for us in the Patreon portfolio. Meta's number two, 68% return in the Patreon portfolio so far. Polaris put options, actually a hedge, is my number three best so far. We'll see what happens when they report earnings. Shopify is my fourth best with a 53% gain. And then Amazon, 48% gain in the Patreon portfolio. So those are the positions that have done the best. But yeah, I can officially get this trophy right here. This is our Patreon Five figure club trophy right there, baby. I officially, I officially can have that now. That, that could be mine now that I hit five figures in that portfolio. If you don't know, we got the six figure club. That's for the private stock group members for when you hit six figures plus in your portfolio. And then we got the seven figure club for when you hit seven figures in your portfolio there. Yeah, I think we got over a hundred of these folks that have reached in the private group. Probably, I would say 600, 700 people that have reached six figures plus in the private group. And uh, as far as five figure members in the Patreon, it's starting to move up pretty rapidly. Uh, T Man sent me this as a text, I think it was a day or two ago. He said uh, he was sending out nine of those five-figure awards to Patreon members this week that hit it. So very, very exciting. If you're looking to join the Patreon, by the way, pin comment down there. You can join it in there, see exactly the moves I'm making each week, plus be part of that Discord chat. It's a no-brainer. Let's just put it that way, okay? Join in there. It's that pin comment. Get your butt in there. Get your booty in there, okay? All right, you guys. So Tesla, my Tesla. Let's get into this, baby. All right. So I go to the front page of Inside EVs here today, and look what I'm greeted with. I'm greeted with this on the very front page here. Lucid CEO, Lucid CEO, $50,000 Model 3, Model Y competitor coming sooner than you think. <laughs> okay, folks, let's put it this way. When I open up Inside EVs, and that's the very first thing I'm greeted with, I know we're at pretty much peak fear in regards to good old Tesla Maesla when we've gone this far. Then now our fear is around Lucid. Oh my gosh, Lucid's going to come after us, and Lucid's going to destroy Tesla now. Here's the deal, okay? Lucid's a gulag stock. If you don't know a gulag stock, a gulag stock is a stock that is under, under $5 a share, okay? So this would be the equivalent of like, I own, I own a gulag stock, and then I own a phenomenal stock. One's name's Honest. Honest is a gulag stock. Elf, Elf on a Shelf, is maybe my most successful investment ever in history in returns, terms of return uh, on investment. I think I'm up 2,000 plus percent on those shares, right? So this is the equivalent of me saying like, Honest is coming for Elf. Elf better watch out. Like, come on, man. Okay, Lucid's a flip and flapjack and gulag stock. This company, in their latest results that they were proud of, they delivered 1,734 vehicles. I did the math on how many, how many Teslas Tesla delivered per day. 
last quarter, and it, it was somewhere around roughly 5,300. Around 5,300 deliveries per day, Tesla did, <laughs> per day. And this company's doing 1,700 per quarter. I mean, it's like, what are we talking about here, okay? And this is the same Lucid that lost from operations last quarter was $752 million. That's in a quarter, okay? If we go for the nine months so far for 2023, they lost they had, oh, look at this, loss from operations, $2.3 billion. I've been part of some money losing companies over the past 15 years. I've never been part of one that was that extreme. Oh my gosh, okay? So here's the deal, folks, okay? We're in a, we're in a certain kind of period in regards to Tesla where fear is overwhelming. The reality that fear is not nearly as scary, but it, it's one of those time periods. And I've seen Tesla go through many of these time periods even before I was an investor of the stock, which I've been an investor of the stock for roughly five, six years now, even before I was in the stock, it went through these, you know, crazy, like fearful time periods when it's just like everything was thrown at it. And we're going through one of those right now. And what we're going to find is these fears are going to be torn down one by one. And we're going to realize, oh man, a lot of these fears were just really not, not as big as we blew them up to be in our heads. And uh, that's the moral of that story. I want to stick to just the facts for a moment. I don't want to have my opinion in here. I want to stick to just the facts, okay? Just the facts. Here's the deal, okay? Tesla just came off of a year where they delivered 1.8 million plus vehicles, okay? Look where this company was just back in 2015. 2015, they were delivering 50,000 vehicles. So they scaled from 50,000 to 1.81 million. One of the only automakers in history to not go bankrupt. Like, it's unbelievable what this company's pulled off, right? If that doesn't convince you enough, look at the revenue and look what's happened to the revenue. In 2015, this company did $4 billion of revenue. This past year, 2023, they did $96.7 billion, billion dollars of revenue. That's a 24X. They 24X revenue from just 2015 to 2023. Who else is doing that? I don't even know if NVIDIA's quite got that growth. I mean, NVIDIA has been an insane scaler over the past eight years or so. I don't even know if they've done it that insane. That's, that's ridiculous. 24X, look at the bottom line, net income. It used to be talked about as like, oh, Tesla's never gonna be profitable. They're never gonna be able to make money from these cars. Look at this, okay, this is on a gap basis. In 2015, the company lost $889 million. They just had a profit on a gap basis, net income of nearly $15 billion. Check this out. I mean, in 2017, the company had a, a net loss of nearly uh, a net loss of nearly two billion dollars to then nearly 15 billion dollars. And remember, this was in a year where they lowered price like a thousand times. Like, are you kidding me? To put up those sorts of numbers when you were lowering, lowering, lowering price, the last thing on Tesla's mind in 2023 was profits. The last thing. Elon only cared about units. That's it. He didn't care about profitability. And yet they still put up a record gap year in terms of net income. That's insane. Look at this. This is their cash on hand. 2015, this company had $1.2 billion roughly in cash on hand. Now, $29 billion in cash, cash equivalents in investments. It's insane. <laughs> insane. I mean, these numbers are pretty shocking. To try to bet against this company, this company that has done this, I think is a very hard case to make but we're not even close to being done here, okay? Look at this. This is very overlooked sides of Tesla's business. Everybody's focused on, well, how many cars did they sell? Model 3s, Model Ys, things like that, okay? They've got these other businesses that are growing into giants right in front of our eyes, but no one's paying attention to them. Check this out. Tesla last year in 2023 did over $6 billion in Keep in mind, this is a $6 billion run rate business now that's growing over 50% a year. Okay, energy generation and storage revenue. That is incredible. Check out this line item right here. Services and other revenue. This is a business that just grew 37% last year in a bad year for Tesla. And they did over $8.3 billion in revenue. So these, these two businesses together should be well over $20 billion of revenue next year. Well over. It's just a question of how far over are we going with the, the $20 billion based upon kind of these growth rates here. And keep in mind, these businesses were, you know, significantly smaller just a few years ago. Look at 2019, right? Prior to Rona, prior to all the craziness, 
$1.5 billion in energy generation and storage revenue versus over $6 billion now. $2.2 billion in services and other revenue versus over $8 billion now at this point in time. That is incredible. And the numbers are just going to keep pouring in for those two businesses that are just epically massive and are just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, okay? Tesla is factually way more than just an auto company. And tell me how many other companies have several other lines of business over $5 billion of run rate in revenue. Seriously, how many other companies in the world have two other business lines that are over a $5 billion run rate? How many? Not many. (laughs) I can think of maybe two or three other businesses in the world. I mean, it's incredible. Absolutely incredible. And that's not even the best thing, okay? Here's the deal, okay? Energy storage deployments. I mean, uh, the, the chart's self-explanatory there. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure out that. This is where it gets into, some people feel like Tesla's a utility company. A lot of people just want to group them into automaker. And, and you look at something like this, you look at the, the revenue they're starting to bring in, you're like, wait a minute, is this actually an automaker plus a utility company? But then you look at services and other gross profit, and that reached up to nearly $500 million this past year, and then just is scaling rapidly. I mean, literally, they took this from 2020 was a $300 million plus gross loss to now around a $500 million gross profit. And now you're starting to wonder, wait a minute, is this like an Apple? Are we talking about this is like an Apple situation where their services revenue is just going to continue to grow massively. And next thing you know, it's going to be a 20 billion, 30 billion, 40 billion, $50 billion a year business with epic profitability for that business line. Oh, it looks like we're headed there considering we just scaled from 2.2 billion in 2019 to 8.3 billion. <gasps> and we don't even have FSD done yet. Imagine when that comes. Oh, we'll speak about FSD in just a moment. Okay. Here's another fact for you. Model Y, best-selling vehicle globally in 2023. Incredible. Incredible. There can only be one number one. Model 3, another fact for you. This baby just got updated. Finally, after years and years and years of basically the same Model 3, finally got updated. So, hmm, I wonder if there's going to be a little excitement in terms of sales over the next several years, being that they got an updated Model 3. I don't know. Maybe just my opinion. I think there's a pretty high probability of that, right? Here, I thought this matters so significantly. And I brought this out as a point for the video the other day, uh, a couple days ago. I pointed this out. They produced nearly 500, uh, 560,000 vehicles in 2023 from the Fremont factory. Tesla's a company that's always doing the impossible. This was, people thought this had never happened. The 250, they said 250 a year max out of Fremont, right? Then it was 400 a year max out of Fremont. Then, oh, they can't do over 500,000 out of Fremont. Now they're doing nearly 560,000 vehicles in 2023 out of the Fremont factory. Tesla's just a great example of a very rare company that every time you th- say they can't do that, they do it, they accomplish it. They could never, da blah, blah. I mean, the amount of times I've heard this over the years in regards to Tesla, they can't do it. They do it. There's almost every other company in the world, you could say they can't do it, and you're right, they can't do it. Tesla's a freak company that when you say they can't do it, they're like, oh, watch us. Just watch us. We'll do it, okay? It's, it's a superstar athlete. It's the LeBron James. It's the Michael Jordan. It's the um, Tom Brady. It's the whoever you want to put it up to, okay? It's the Usain Bolt of companies that they do the impossible, and you're just like, I can't, you just sit back and you're just like, I, I can't believe they, they pulled that off. Even the biggest bears on, in regards to Tesla stock, they're constantly saying that they're like, dang man, you know, as bad as they want to hate all the time, even sometimes they have to give Tesla credit. Like, I can't believe they actually did blah, blah, blah. I can't believe they did that. I can't believe Elon pulled it off. I mean, at some point in time, you just got to tip your hat and say, dang man, they do the impossible. We've got the Cybertruck ramping this year. This isn't like, oh, it's going to ramp 10 years from now, five years from now. It's ramping this year. This is the big ramp year, okay? And this is so exciting because tell me another more talked about hyped vehicle in the history of mankind. I'll wait. I'll wait. I'll wait. There is none. There is none. The Cybertruck's by far and away the most hyped, talked about truck in the history of vehicles, period. It's the most famous truck on the planet, and no one even has it yet. (laughs) I mean, that's just ridiculous. 
the most famous talked about truck and, and, and people don't even have this truck yet? It's ridiculous, man. Ridiculous. So, the, I mean, literally, they're going to be able to sell as many cyber trucks as they possibly want to sell for years and years and years to go. And keep in mind, these trucks will be huge money makers. Maybe not at first, the first few quarters of that ramp, while they're trying to figure everything out here, maybe not money makers. Tell somebody to even lose money on the first you know, quarter or two of trucks. But I can tell you long term, huge money. I, I would bet you likely the, the profit margins on Cybertruck will be far greater than any of their other vehicles. That's my hunch. Usually trucks are phenomenal for profit, just as for that, okay? So just wait on that, baby, okay? Just wait on that. Then we have Tesla Wraps, which is a business I said they should get in uh, a while ago. And sure enough, now they just entered this business here recently. This is a genius new opportunity. These wraps, it looks like they're selling them for anywhere between six and $8,000. So they're definitely priced heavier than if you get it done at a, at a wrap place. Because most wrap places will wrap it for like, oh gosh, probably about four to 5K you're looking at. So Tesla is going to be 1000 to maybe $3,000 above those wrap places. But a lot of people would just trust Tesla more to do it. And it's just kind of like the ease of having it done right there and not having to take it into a wrap place and it takes them several days to get the job done and you're out of the vehicle. And so a lot of people are just, and plus some people are going to want to wrap it into their loan, no pun intended. They're just going to want to wrap it into their loan versus having to pay out of pocket many times for like a, you know, a local place to wrap it. So this is going to be a huge, huge profit opportunity. I can tell you those wrap places make some money here in Vegas. And uh, Tesla is going to be selling it for a higher price. And I bet you Tesla is going to be way more efficient when they go to wrap these models too. So I'm talking, that's, that's going to be big money making business there. Profits. You want to talk about profits? Do you want to talk about the service category? This is huge. And guess what? So many people want to wrap their Teslas. I mean, it's insane how many people wrap their Teslas, okay? Let's talk about full self-driving. So new full self-driving's out. And from what I've seen, it is very impressive. I mean, extremely impressive. And if you haven't got to see some of the new videos they have out in regards to the new full self-driving beta, you might want to check that out. And just the commentary around that is pretty phenomenal, okay? Dramatically better than any experience I've had with FSD 11. I mean, you know, amazing to see how far FSD has come. Can't wait to get my update. So FSD, you know, a lot of the bears are just kind of given up on this and things like that in terms of like, even a lot of the bulls, I think, have get, kind of given up on FSD. And I'm just like, here we are at a moment where I'm like, this is actually insanely close now. Like five years ago when it was talked about and three years ago, no, we weren't even remotely close. Now we're actually at a place when you see the new full self-driving, you're like, dude, this is insanely impressive. We're, we're at the finish line now. And so that's, that's something here, man. So this is all like just huge things going for Tesla, right? It's just thing after thing after thing after thing. We can get caught up into interest rates. We can get caught up into, you know, consumer sentiment being bad right now and those sorts of things. But at the end of the day, in Chinese competition and all the things the bears talk about, but at the end of the day, what it just ran you through there, that's a hard company to bet against, right? Whose team do you want to be on? Do you want to be on this, this company's team or, or, or not on the team? If this was an athlete and this could be your teammate on the, on, uh, you know, for, the, for the team, would you want to be on their team or would you not? Knowing the track record this company has over the past several years. I mean, this is like the, the, the Usain Bolt of flip and flapjacking companies. And it's like, you don't want to be on part of that team? Okay, you can, you're going to lose a relay race, but you can do whatever you want to do, right? Now, the, the talk is always like, Tesla's too expensive. I'm going to buy Tesla when it crashes, when the company's in bad times. That's when I'm going to buy it. Folks, 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 guess what? The company has crashed. The company is in bad times. 2023, 2024 are the bad times for Tesla. And I know the numbers still look like great times for almost any other company, but this is bad times for Tesla. This is bad times. When they're in the, about to ramp a new vehicle, you know, the Model Y and Model 3 are just getting refreshed here. Like, this is their bad time period. They had to cut price and cut price. This was the bad times. So, I mean, the stock peaked out at 400. It's been anywhere between 100 and 200 from most of the past year or so. This is the bad times. So if you're not gonna willing to buy Tesla now, when are you going to buy Tesla? When it crashes, when it's in great times, that's not going to happen. The stock's not going to crash in great times. It's going to be at probably new all-time highs. 
when it's great times. So you need to buy when it's crashing and when they're in bad times, which has been where the stock's been for the last year plus, right? So, you know, you got to kind of think about these things a little bit, right? Then you say, well, I want it for cheap. I, you know, it's too expensive. I want it for like a 20 or 30 forward P or something like that. And, and to that, I say, good luck. I would love to buy Amazon shares at a 20 or 30 forward P, but it's just not very realistic, okay? Most of the time I've ever seen Amazon, it trades between a 40 and a 150 forward P. Why does it trade like that? Well, because it's a very special company that has massive amounts of growth levers all over the company that has so many years of growth ahead of it, it's just, it's hard to even fathom. Guess what Tesla is? The same exact thing. There's growth levers all over Tesla that it's like, oh my gosh, they have this opportunity, this opportunity, this opportunity, this opportunity, that over the next five, 10 years, you can see how the next thing you know, they can get to several hundred billion dollars of revenue. You can see how this company can get to $500 billion of revenue. You can even see a possibility of how this company can get to trillion dollars of revenue down the road. You can see how this company get, can get to $50 billion in net income, to $100 billion in net income. Like you can see the path on how they get there. You can run the numbers and do the projections, right? And so, to get it at a forward P of 20 or 30, it'd be beautiful, but it's just not super realistic. It's like, it's like me saying, okay, there's the brand new Lamborghini. The Lamborghini dealership gets the brand new Lamborghini there. And I'm like, man, a Lamborghini looks awesome. It, it's a $300,000 Lamborghini. Maybe they'll sell it to me for 150,000. Okay. You think they're going to do that? <laughs> like, like, Maybe it could be my lucky day and I could buy that Lamborghini for 150,000 instead of 300,000, but it probably ain't happening. And so the same exact thing could be said for Tesla, like the whole hope of like, oh, maybe I can get a, a lot cheaper value. It, it's so unrealistic. Is it possible? Sure. Is it a very high probability? No. You've got to pay up for great companies. And there's no debating that Tesla's a top tier, one of the best companies in the world. When you look at just what I ran you through there with the financials. Next up here, ASPs for this company, right? They did 1.8 million deliveries last year with a $40,000 plus ASP. So the question is, what happens if their ASPs go down to 30K, right? Let's say they launch a successful Model 2 next-gen vehicle, whatever you want to call it, at a 20K, 25K price point. What do you think is going to happen? You think they're going to deliver 4 million, 5 million, 6 million, 7 million, 10 million vehicles a year? Probably. Yeah, that's where they're headed. Okay. If they can sell that many vehicles at that price point, they can likely sell a lot more vehicles at a much lower price point, right? Because let's just be honest, Tesla still aren't affordable to most people in the population. The far majority of people in the population, especially on the worldwide basis, it's like they can't even imagine spending $45,000 on a vehicle. That's like crazy, right? So there's only a very small amount of the population can actually even afford that, right? Now, keep in mind, more and more people will get their, able to get their hands on a, on a Tesla regardless of the next generation vehicle. And why is that? Well, Teslas are going to start aging. All these, they sold 1.8 million vehicles this past year, right? Those Teslas are going to get older and older, and they'll get sold to somebody else that might be able to pick up a, t a Tesla for $20,000, $15,000, something like that, right? Guess what happens when the vehicles get older? Things break on them. Things go wrong. Guess what's going to happen to the Tesla services revenue as that ticks on over time? Boom, boom, boom. Up, 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 right? Some people will say, okay, let me go ahead and get uh, the full self-driving on that vehicle. Okay, there's an opportunity, especially if they launch a monthly plan down the road. Supercharging. Oh my gosh, like the more Teslas that are out there, the more supercharging revenue the company can bring in. Did anybody think about that? Oh, and guess what? They just work deals with almost every big automaker out there. So almost every big automaker now can start charging in 2024 at Tesla Supercharger. So guess what? Now Tesla's basically going to have a tax on almost the entire auto sector that goes EV. I mean, you just you run through it, man. Like it's thing after thing after thing. And the, and the moment you think, oh, that must be all that Tesla has opportunities to make money. You think about this next thing. It's like, no, they're going to start making money from this. Or they just started making money from this. So this is a new opportunity. It's growth levers all over the place. That's why stocks like this are always going to trade rich. Always. Even when they're in bad times, they're still going to trade rich. Never mind when they're in great times. That's when they're going to trade at insane multiples. Because then everybody wants a piece. Then you're buying the stock at all-time highs again, right? Now, next up here. Is there a more proven, proven CEO in the history of mankind than Mr. Elon Musk? Let me ask you that. No, there isn't. There's not one. There's nobody. I thought about this for a moment. 
I really thought about it and, and I, I try to think about it. everybody who's been super successful as a CEO and I thought about Warren Buffett, I thought about Bezos, I thought about Steve Jobs, I thought about Walt Disney, I thought about so many different folks. And at the end of the day, it came back to one thing. There's never been anybody as successful of a businessman, as a businessman, I'm not talking about innovator, creator, anything like that, as a businessman than Elon Musk. Factually and opinion-based, right? Factually, because he's the richest man in the world and the richest man ever in history, right? Um, but factual, but opinion as well. I mean, here's the deal. He started X, well, it used to be called X.com, not to confuse it with the new X, which is Twitter, right? That formed up with PayPal. So basically, as he has seeds in PayPal, right? SpaceX, which is completely transformed space travel. And I mean, the things, if you've kept up with the SpaceX story over the past 10 years, it's like ridiculous. Like the things they're doing at SpaceX is, once again, you didn't even think this stuff was possible. And then to create Tesla, well, you know, he didn't technically create Tesla, but he's basically the whole reason Tesla's successful today. I mean, there's, there's nobody that, can, that has that track record. Nobody. And then, obviously, they got Neuralink, and then he's got the Boring Company, and, and other projects as well. But I'm just saying, those three, who's got that pedigree? No one. No one. No one can touch him. And so, when I make a bet on Tesla, it's also betting on the most successful businessman in the history of businessmen, right? Which is absolutely phenomenal. So, at the end of the day, I just took you through everything there, and it makes it a very hard stock not to be a buyer of especially under $200. It, under $200, it's just, it's hard to not be a buyer of the stock. And so this is one of those stocks that I look at and I say, I hope it goes lower. I would love this stock to go back down to 101 bucks where it started 2023. I don't think it's super realistic, but I would love that to happen. I would love it to go down to 150, 125. But I'm very afraid that every dip is going to be bought here, just as it was today. Every time you got some selling pressure today, it got bought up. Who's gobbling up all those shares? Somebody was. Somebody was on the other side of all those cells, gobbling up, gobbling up. Who was it? I don't know. But all I know is, in regards to Tesla, the sentiment changes fast. Bullish to bearish, bearish to bullish. Right when you think it's the end of the world, oh my gosh, three months later, the skies are so bright and everybody's so excited about the next whatever thing. And next thing you know, the stock's moving, the momentum there, and it's game over. So, I don't know. We'll see how things play out. I like uh, betting on this company. It's done me very well over time. And I think it will do me a lot better in the future. Let's just put it that way, folks. Okay? Appreciate you joining me. Looking to join my Patreon. Pin comment down there. I appreciate everybody that joins me in there. I think we have, we have a lot of members in the Patreon now. And I appreciate every single person for being part of that Patreon. And I hope you get good value out of that, seeing exactly how I build a portfolio each and every week. And also getting part of that Discord chat as well. And... Collect your five-figure trophy as well. We send these complimentary. If you're a member in there, we literally send you these complimentary uh, once you can show proof that you have over $10,000 in your portfolio. Send it over to T-Man. He sends it over to you. Much love as always, and have a great day.